Hello everyone, welcome to day 2nd of September League Code Challenge and today's question is Unique Binary Search Trees 2 In this question, we are given an integer n and we need to tell the count of structurally unique binary search tree that can be formed out of all the numbers into consideration starting from 1 up till n So, let's take one example Here, the value of n that is given to us is 3 and these five uh, are those different unique binary search trees that can be formed. We need to return the head node or the root node of all such trees in a list of roots. So without much ado, let's look at the presentation that I have created for this and let's get started with the solution. Unique binary search trees second lead code 95. And let's take a slightly longer example so that you get a good hold of the concept and uh, here the value of n that is given to us is 5 that means we need to take how many elements into consideration 5 elements into the consideration that means the binary search tree will have at max 5 nodes and uh, we need to tell all permutations of such BSTs possible let's start the iteration the first node that we have is 1 so we will be making this node as the root uh, which is 1 and all those trees with 1 as a root will have one distinct property that its left child would be null and its right child will have 2, 3, 4 and 5 as nodes. So if we already know the uh, roots uh, to all the combinations of the trees containing 2, 3, 4 and 5 we can attach those independent trees let's assume this is one possible tree uh, 2 here, 2 as the root and then we have null then we have 3, then we have 4 and then we have 5 so this is one possible combination the other possible combination could be we have 2 here, then we have null then we have 4 here, then we have 3 here and then we have 5 here and the other combination could be we have 2 here, we have null here, we have 5 here, we have 4 here, we have 3 here. So these 3 are valid uh, trees with 2 as a root. So uh, if we already know all the valid trees with 2 as a node, with 3 as a node, with 4 as a node, with 5 as a node containing 2, 3, 4, 5 in each one of them what we can do, we can attach each one of them uh, to the right child of 1 and we will keep the left child of 1 as null. If we have pre-calculated the roots of all the possible trees containing 2, 3, 4 and 5, we can manipulate this with this, con this type of constru construction where we are attaching the right child of 1 with the heads of all possible trees containing 2, 3, 4, 5 and the left child of 1 to null. What? Let's move on to the next iteration. Here the root would be treated as 2. So when we are treating 2 as a root, how many elements will lie to its right? Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 will lie to its right and 1 will lie to its left. Uh, since there is a singular node here, there is only one possibility of keeping 1 as its left child whereas for its right child uh, we need to know how many trees containing 3, 4 and 5 are possible if we know the heads of such trees then we will attach 2's right to their heads and 2's left will point to 1 so let's try this up uh, so that you get a better understanding of the concept let's assume 3 as the root and we have 4, we have 5 one possibility is this next we have 3 as a root again and 5 as its right child and 5 left child would point to 4 now no more trees are possible with 3 as the root so what we should do we should move on to the next possibility we have 4 as the root and we have 3 here we have 5 here and uh, you can't create more trees containing 3, 4 and 5 with 4 as the root so let's let me change the color of pen and let's take magenta now uh, next we have is 5 
So using five, I'll create two more trees. One possibility is this five, four, three, and the other one is something like this five, three, and four. So using three, four, and five, five possible trees are possible. Uh, two trees containing three as the root, one tree containing four as the root, and two trees containing five as the root. And once we have those roots available to us, we will attach two's right child to them, and two's left child would be attached to one because there is only one possibility for its left part. Let's move on to the next iteration. Here, the root of the tree has to be treated as three, and we have to divide the input array into two parts. The left part will have one comma two, and the right part will have four comma five. If we know the heads of all the trees containing four and five as nodes in it, uh, then we will attach three's right child to each one of them. Similarly, three's left child would be tree connected to all the possible trees containing one comma two. So let's try those possibilities. For four comma five, we have four as the root. Then we have null as its left child, five as its right child. We have five as the root. We have Four null as its right child and four as its left child. So these are the two possibilities. Similarly, you can generate the possibilities for one comma two as well. So if one is the root, then uh, two will be its right child. If two is the root, one will be its left child. So what? How many trees are you gonna generate in this case? Uh, it would be equal to two into two because let's see those possibilities. Three's right child will be connected to four, and when three's right child is connected to four, uh, then uh, there are two possibilities arising. Where in the first case, uh, three's left child is connected to one, and in the second case, three's left child is connected to four. So uh, the total number of trees that are generated so far are two, and in the next case, uh, we have. Let me just change the color of pen again. Uh, three's right child will be connected to five, and a uh, three's left child would be connected to one, and in the second case, three left child would be connected to two. So again, there are two more cases arising. In totality, that turns out to be four, and you can return all such trees with three as a node. Similarly, the, in the next case, we will do the reversal. Here we have a one, two, and three as nodes in the left part of the tree, and five in the right part of the tree. If you know the roots to all the trees containing one comma two comma three as nodes, uh, then you will be attaching four's left child uh, to them, and four's right child would be connected to five. And the last case is again pretty straightforward. Uh, we have one, two, three, and four uh, in the left part of the tree, and null in the right part of the tree. Reversal of the those cases that we discussed uh, previously. The question slightly looks a bit tricky, but it's not. Uh, whatever I have told right now, I'll be exactly doing the same steps in the coding section as well. So stay tuned. Moving on to the coding section. I have created a helper method here, and uh, I have it accepts two parameters. One is the starting index, other one is the ending index into consideration. And as a default case, I have passed one comma n into it. Let's talk about the core method. Uh, these are the corner cases. I'm more interested in the uh, core logic. I, I start the iteration from i equals to start, goes up till i is less than or equal to end. I generate all the possible left trees and I generate all the possible right trees. I, I using the helper method again and this time I pass in the same value for start and I reduce uh, my end to i minus one for the left possible trees for the right possible trees i pass i plus 1 uh, i in increase the start to i plus 1 and the end remains the same and once i have all those heads of right possible trees and left possible trees i am generating more trees out of it how uh, i am i have written two loops one iterating over the left possible trees another iterating over the right possible trees and uh, for each iteration I'll create a new result. I'll create a new node named root and I'll attach root dots left to its left root and root dots right to its right root, which is returned using right possible trees and left possible trees. 
and once I have attached and built that node, uh, the root node, I'm adding it to the list. And this is what I am doing recursively so that I generate all possible trees. Let's talk about the corner cases. If my start happens to be greater than equal to greater than end, then I simply add null to it and return the list. If my start happens to be equal to end, that means there's only one list, one node in the tree, and I generate a new node and it attach it to the list. Let me just submit this up. Accept it. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. Till then, goodbye.